You're listening to Talk Star Wars, a proud member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network. Check us out on the web at StarWarsCommonwealth.com and take your first steps into a larger world. Talk Star Wars is a production of Emotionally 14. For fantastic podcasts, video series, blog posts, and much more, visit us on the web at Emotionally14.com and enjoy content for the permanently teenaged. Welcome to Talk Star Wars, episode 188 from Emotionally14.com. We are back in the groove. I'm your host, as always, Rob Wade, and I'm joined by the Chewy to my Han, the Neon Numb, or L3 to my Lando, depending on which of the films you're fondest of, Brad Harmer Barnes. Hey, I'm the Brad Teal Rob. How are you doing? Um, yeah, I suppose that's probably the most accurate. It's the most accurate one, yeah. It's the canonically most, most yeah. appropriate. I am good. How are you? Yeah, all good. All right, um, excellent. Yeah, cool. Energy yeah. levels high tonight on Talk Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sleepy time. The only been on holiday. I want. I could. Yeah, well, you know. Now you know but how I, do, I feel. I, I, all I the remember time. how hot <laughs> my heart bleeds. You probably want to get that looked into. Yeah, a few people have said that. <laughs> no medical professionals, though. So I'm no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just that plague doctor. Yeah. 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 You're right though. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, how was your honeymoon? It was lovely, thank you. Good. Yes, we, we got back uh, about a week ago, but um, quite late in the evening, so obviously mm-hmm. the idea of doing CSW was um, not palatable, just being on, I think, 22-hour journey. And none taken. Taking all the transfers and flights and stuff and time zone change. Mm-hmm. Fun times. But, um, yeah, uh, didn't, fa- didn't much fancy, you know, a 1 o'clock in the morning's record start time. I think that's totally fair. I think it's totally, perfectly reasonable. On a good night, mm-hmm. I'm in bed by then. But, yeah. you know, they're very rarely a good night and stuff. Um, and then typically, in Lucasfilm fashion, mm-hmm. you wait ages for news and trailers, and then when you go away, three come along at once. Yep. So it's been a busy, so it old, goes. Yeah, it's been a busy old couple of weeks while we've not been in a position to record. Um, mm-hmm. Such is life, you know. So... I think it's fair to say, before we move into listener stuff, that you're not going to get the frame-by-frame trailer breakdown that other Mm -hmm. channels uh, were scrambling to put out within minutes of things dropping because Mm -hmm. a lot of the takes are no longer hot. They are tepid at best. Well, we can just microwave up our takes. Yeah, Yeah. we can can microwave our takes, um, reheated takes on the uh, Rise of Skywalker trailer, and then obviously there's the Mandalorian trailer, and then there's also the Jedi Fallen Order trailer, which is only two weeks away now. Mm-hmm. Um, no, obviously Mandalorian is slightly less than two weeks if you're in countries where they care about you. We're in the UK. Uh, we can expect it sometime in time yeah. for what? Who cares? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's sometime in time for time. Mm-hmm. We, will, uh, we can expect uh, the Mandalorian with it. So we'll move into listener stuff to, to kick us off. And uh, we begin, as we no doubt began last time, uh, mm-hmm. and I know this because I edited it, so I'm sure it's true, uh, with an email from Vesuvi. And Vesuvi writes, Thanks, Rob, you freshly married man, you. It's true, I was. Uh, thanks, Brad. You're welcome, Vesuvi. You're you also, <laughs> yeah, clearly important, but, you know, yeah. the marriage is less fresh. All right. But no less... Shots fired. No, 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 that's nice. I don't know what the word is. <laughs> I don't know. I, no. I, I, no, I think you're overanalyzing. Yeah, maybe. It's, it, mm-hmm. I've been, it's been known. Um, in fact, I have several wall charts on. You know what? Never mind. Let's move on. Uh, since you wondered about John Favreau's connection to or direct interaction with George Lucas, I've only found one instance in which Favreau recounts advice Lucas personally bestowed upon him. Here's an excerpt from HuffingtonPost.com. Mm-hmm. One thing he said to me was, remember, John, the real audience for all stories and all myths is the kids that are coming of age, Favreau recalled. We enjoy the stories as adults, but really, storytelling is about imparting the wisdom of the previous generations onto the children who are becoming adults and giving them a context for how to behave and how to learn the lessons of the past 
without making the mistakes on their own. Lucas, who sold Lucasfilm to Disney in 2012, kept the sage words coming. That's the hope, that you can teach them how to avoid all the hardship but garner all the wisdom, Favreau said, mm-hmm. said Lucas told him. Mm-hmm. I like that as a mm-hmm. little philosophical message, you know. Yeah. I've heard it said that memories, much like, uh, you know, the experience you pass down are not so much for historical record, they're a blueprint of, don't do that again. Yeah, okay. It didn't go down so well. I mean, I was I heard it explain much more eloquently than that, but you know, I'm, I'm ultimately I'm thicker than the person who delivered it originally, so there's that kind of follows along. Yeah, your speculations on the mystery of Project Luminous were interesting. I hope so because I've completely forgotten them in the ensuing three weeks. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's going to be a series of stories that will also call for and perhaps formally organise real world charitable participation. In that way, suggesting that the force will be channeled through readers, partakers, empowering their productive acts. Putting it into words suddenly strikes me as rather ambitious, perhaps overly so. We'll know more in 2020. I mean, that's true of a lot of things. Very true, yes. Um, whether or not that calendar was a waste of money, that's one of yeah. the things I'll know in 2020. Um, some people say, get the full 12 months, but no, it, you know, discounts, discounts for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guess who's planning to purchase a tiny wedding cake and eat the entire thing herself to honour her favourite newlyweds? Eyelashes batting. Bingo. Affectionately, the Suvi Knight of the Commonwealth. P.S. Oh. Please give my warmest regards to your wife. I will. Tip it. Hey, wife. <laughs> no, wife. Uh. Yo, wife. Yo, wife. Uh, so thank you very much for that, Vesuvi. Uh, it's very kind of you. And thank you to everybody who um, sent messages on things like Twitter. And there was a couple, mm-hmm. of, a couple of private emails and stuff. It's all very, cool. very kind of you. And it's very sweet that uh, people can kind of feel sufficiently connected that they mm-hmm. feel like I should send yeah. something nice on the day. That's very, yeah. very kind. I mean, uh, I've, I've never bothered for a podcast that I listen to. Well, exactly. You know, there's, this yeah. is one of those nice things. People do, people feel the yeah. needs. Don't know what it is about what we do. Perhaps it's the, uh, perhaps it's the intimacy of not yeah. having the hundreds of thousands of listeners yeah. who can just get lost I, in the we, mix. We've got at least eight. I'm, I think that's a fairly safe We're all in Uganda, but we have. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can't quite precise the numbers, but we seem to have popped in and out of the charts in sort of closer to home in the last couple of weeks. What? As in UK and Ireland type. Oh, charts. put him in Luxembourg. It's closer no, no. to home. That's, I mean, that is closer to home. That's true. Ge- that is geography. Um, yeah. But no, Maybe. in UK and Ireland, seemed to, we seem to have popped in and out um, of yeah. the charts. That's what she says. Uh, uh, well, I, I think I know what that is. The Force Awakens roundtable, right? No, it's just because oh. we're great. Oh, I mean, that's that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the the Project Luminous thing, the, the idea of... I could see there being a promotional campaign around something like that. I can't see it being a series of stories that will actually call for it in the real world. It's it's mm-hmm. a bit too fourth wall. I mean, I wouldn't put it past the story group because they yeah. occasionally... I mean, not even story, because of the story group. They don't mean to cast explosions on them, but just sometimes mm-hmm. book companies do weird stuff. Yeah. Or just promotional exercises in general are very strange. Mm-hmm. Do you remember, on the subject of weird promotional exercises, um, Resident Evil 5's promotional campaign when it came no. out on the Xbox and, and PlayStation? I don't, I'm afraid, no. Um, it was leaving a bunch of fake dismembered oh, body parts yes. and dumpsters around. I, I remembered that, but I couldn't remember what the game was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ultimately, it was effective in so much as I remember it. Yeah. Well, um, got some press, and yeah. you know, there is a school of thought that says there's no such thing as bad PR. Um, yeah. And like I say, certainly putting Resident Evil 5 in the news mm-hmm. can't have done it too much harm, not least of all, because there have been a few people who go, oh, is that out this week? Yeah, because that was my reaction. So mm-hmm. I didn't realise it was so close to release. That's cool. Yeah, uh, much like Fallen Order. I mean, Fallen Order mm-hmm. didn't go down that route, even though with lightsabers, you could argue we believe make the same yeah. connection. Um, so Vesuvi, thank you very much for your um, mm-hmm. main thread email, and enjoy your wedding cake, the small one. Mm-hmm. Um, I would send you some, but it would spoil by the time it reached you. Uh, Vasily was also kind enough to give us uh, two weeks worth of resistance roundups, keeping them oh, up wow. with the yeah. So she actually kept up with it while we were while we were in hiatus as well. So that was uh, mm-hmm. appreciated. So first episode, I think this is part number two in the new series. 
Mm-hmm. I'd say Live Fire was an action-packed exploration of the contrast between how resistance pilots are trained to favor teamwork as opposed to how first order pilots prefer culling the weak. Mm-hmm. There isn't really much more to say of this straightforward episode, except we hear the name of the Keldor member of Ace Squadron. He's called Bo. Uh, and we learn that Lin Garva is another former resident of the Colossus who switched sides along with Jason Tam. We also meet a new astringent lieutenant, Gaelic. A new ice moon with dazzling spires was also introduced, but it wasn't named. Hopefully I'll be able to give you a more cryptic tease next week. Well, we're literally just about to find out. <laughs> because moments later, or about a week later in this case, but obviously moments later in, in our timeline, Hunt on Kelsor 3 begins with Captain Dozer announcing to the residents of the Colossus that food stores have dwindled to the point in which rationing is necessary. This seems like the last straw for many who immediately start packing. They think taking their chances out and about, despite the war with the First Order, would be preferable to staying crammed and undernourished on the station. But when Tara and Kaz try to persuade Aunt Z to have patience and stick around a bit longer, she suggests that they go back to the Ice Moon featured in the previous episode to butcher mm-hmm. one of the enormous Jakusks, which would provide ample meat for their denizens for a long while. The pirates take this as a challenge and eagerly agree. Of course, Kaz and Tora are aware of how the beast's oversized epidermis is resistant to blaster fire, unlike its underbelly, a fact which the sorry, uh, the Warbird gang is oblivious to. And that should be enough for setup. But I can also tease that all you Buggles fans will be in for a Buggles-heavy segment. <laughs> Love me some Buggles. So I haven't mm-hmm. seen an episode, but that's a fun word. Sure, and yeah. They kill, you know, and they also alerted us to the unfortunate death of the radio star and the responsible parties. <laughs> <laughs> and we should never forget the responsible parties in that context. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Vasubi, thank you very much for keeping up, keeping us abreast of the Resistance Roundup, particularly as, as I say, if you don't have, I think, Disney XD in the UK? Sounds right. Yeah. Um, if you don't have Disney XD, you are pretty much out of luck when it comes to Resistance because it doesn't seem to be available anywhere. Nope. Uh, and I think now that Disney Plus is on the not in, you know, somewhat horizon yeah that's not going to change anytime soon which is a darn shame because i would actually quite mm-hmm. like to see it totally but you know but apparently my money is no good here nice <laughs> yes. yeah but you know whatever like republic credits indeed um so we got a bunch of small short sharp thoughts from uh james i don't know if it's weeble or weeble um, I couldn't 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 advise you. Believe it's, I believe it's Weibel, but I'm not sure. Um, who's been sending? He's been sending us uh, messages. He sends us uh, us and the Tumbling Saber podcast mm-hmm. uh, little thoughts as they kind of pop up, and they're always, you know, they always get a discussion going. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to start call them Weibel's Wonderings for now. Okay. And in the absence of a better name, if you, if James, if you have one, then by all means chuck it over. But uh, that's the best I've got off the top of my head. <laughs> How heavily do you think the Siege of Mandalore in the new season of The Clone Wars will tie into The Mandalorian? Uh, I don't think it will tie in all that much because we're separated by, what, about 30, nearly 40 years. You say that, um, but then in the trailer, I think there's... My my recollection is that there's flashbacks. Super battle, there's super battle droids, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So maybe... I mean, maybe, maybe. the Siege of Mandalore is a deep cut, even in the context of The Clone Wars. yeah. But the notion of there being some... I mean, the Clone Wars tie-in seems highly mm-hmm. likely. But yeah. um, beyond that, it's hard to say for sure. Yeah. I would I would be inclined to think it's not going to be very heavy. There may be a mention of it, mm-hmm. but I think that's as far as it's going to go. The, yeah. But Clone Wars-wise, you may well see some back and... <laughs> maybe some back and forth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's all right. It can't she, be has ex- she has exploded. Bloody involuntary actions. Who can who that have, am I? Um, yeah. <laughs> next one. I recently watched Prospect with Sophie Thatcher and Pedro Pascal. Obviously, the Star Wars tie-in is he's the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. If any out there wonder if he can play a hard case gone soft, ooh. <laughs> oh, ooh. check this movie out. I found it well done, and it reminded me of Silver Age sci-fi with its highly focused storytelling while suggesting a larger, interesting universe. Okay. I'm going to make a note of that. I've never heard of it. Likewise, this is a new one on me as well. I'm going to see if it's available on streaming service du jour. Mm. 
What would you all think about the end of episode nine showing E.T. dropping 3PO and R2 off with George Lucas? <laughs> um, it's very two and a half men, isn't it? Uh, I think there's every chance that James has hit his head on a hard object recently. At that point, yes. This yeah. Tasty bonk, tasty wop. Yes. Tasty. Um, yeah, I, it's very, that for me is a bit two and a half men. Do you ever see the ending of two and a half men? Uh, no, the beginning was enough. Yeah, well, quite. And, you know, if it wasn't enough that every time a scene changed, it seemed to go, man, I want to just do a count, maybe like a drinking game, but I feel like it might murder me in an episode or two. Two and a half men, yeah. So, like I say, if it wasn't yeah. enough that it would it would just go, man, yeah. every time a scene changed. Um, the ending, it, as I recall... It wasn't, it wasn't the worst sitcom I've ever seen. It's no. just that I can't think of a way to end this sentence. Mm. Yeah, it's it was very much a thing I watched. Uh, I think I was caught like the last five minutes. It was, must have been on before something I was watching. Yeah, I guess so. it was just it was painfully bad. It was not the best, um, and yet yeah, this is the thing. Despite the in- inclusion of people like Ryan Stiles, mm. who I love that guy, yeah. um, whose line and Charlie mm-hmm. Sheen, I'm f- a fan of his too. Yeah, totally. Um, Ashton Kutcher, I'm sure, is a tremendous human being. He's perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah I, I'm John, not offended you know, by his work. Yeah, exactly. John Cryer again. You know, not for yeah. the cast involved at all. Just not, not this, not the best. No, it was just no. lazy. But the any the reason I bring up the ending mm-hmm. is because from memory, I it involved to, ET dropping them off with George. No, Lucas. but it was similarly matter. <laughs> okay. Somebody from the back who looked a lot like Charlie Sheen walks up to the front door. Mm-hmm. And a piano falls on him, and then you cut back to a director's chair and Chuck Lorre turns around and says winning and that ended the series huh yeah I don't know whether that ended the series uh, like ended it forever or whether that was just the end of a one particular series but that struck me as one incredibly petty and unnecess- and weirdly unnecessary but two also weirdly meta in a way that I don't think is very good um I mean Normally, I wouldn't criticise stuff that I haven't seen and kind of only have third-party recountings of because there's so much that you have to experience yourself to get. Um, it yeah, sounds terrible. Know, that. that sounds balls, yeah. <laughs> you got some sort of sponsorship deal for that word. Um, it's cropped it's, up a lot recently. It's not a swear word, so I can get away with it on the show, but it also conveys my intent. Fair. Yeah, that, yeah. that is a perfectly prominent explanation. Yeah. I'm good with that. I just wondered if there was some sort of, some no. sort of uh, endorsement deal I wasn't aware of on the back of your shirt. Uh, like a football yeah. team yeah I've got my endorsement deal from uh, the Museum of Balls in Ballstown Ballsachusetts <laughs> <laughs> oh is that the place still going that's good yeah I'm pleased uh, the gift shop has ordered too many balls but <laughs> apart from that it's fine <laughs> yeah well there is you know you, the thing is how many balls is too many balls to order so you have to it's, you have to weigh it, that up uh, it's, it's, it's just been a balls up it's just a cost balls analysis <laughs> yeah uh, anyway oh, James oh, continues a further yeah. wondering Okay, yeah. So, um, how do we feel about episode nine ending with George Lucas having a piano drop on his head? Yeah, why not? That's basically. I mean, it's like the slide whistle. I mean, that's kind of what the last year I was going for, wasn't it? (laughs) 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 Oh, oh, just oh, some low hanging fruit. (laughs) Oh, lovely. This must be delicious (laughs) because the effort is low. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, What if Ray uses the link with Kylo like Harry does with Voldemort? to see what his plans are and beats him to Endor. I like the, the way that read, yeah. just as an aside, yeah, he beats him to Endor sounds like, you know, I'll whip you to the other side of the room. Yeah. Is that, no, just me, um, just my shoulders? All right. Uh, I, I, pro- I promote, propose a new piece of legislation for Talk Styles, which is we do not acknowledge any uh, Harry Potter-related subjects. Okay. Well, can I finish the thing at least? No. Right. It's well, I'm, going, your show. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. Make your peace. Um, after they fight on the Death Star ruins, they take the Falcon underwater to find the artifact to keep them out of Kylo's hands. Mm-hmm. Ray finds out too late that Palpatine has possessed the wreckage and ends up becoming possessed herself. Kylo finally sees what true darkness is and it scares him, so he decides to save Ray, but can't. So he tricks Palpatine into possessing him, then kills mm-hmm. himself, maybe flies into a sun so there is nothing to possess. <laughs> I'm not sure I like this whole idea, but I thought I'd send it on to see what you think. 
Okay. I think that the Star new Star Wars trilogy takes more inter- more influence from Harry Potter than it should anyway. This is and exactly this would be my one more thing. Because it's already doing the one chooses the wizard because of the lightsaber. And, yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't think that all fiction should kind of exist in a vacuum. I like that sure, but, they kind of influence each other. But mm. at the same time, why is it... Why is it always Harry Potter? Yeah, my the other thing as well is I've noticed this phrase pop up a lot, and I think it's being abused and should be mm-hmm. taken in by whatever the lexical equivalent of the social services is. It's like poetry, it rhymes. Mm-hmm. And what it's used for recently, it seems increasingly, is it's like poetry. It's word for word identical. <laughs> <laughs> that's not poetry. That's a that's no. a photocopy, is what you've described yeah. there. Um, begins with a P and ends with a Y. So good job yeah. there. But good effort. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think Harry Potter influences are already prominent and sufficient mm-hmm. that they yeah. don't need to add any more. The the link the, the link the force link thing has already got a bit of the occupancy thing to it anyway. Yeah, I'm not a fan. You don't need to do any more than that. I don't think. And I'm no. already wary of what I think will be a Harry Potter moment in episode nine, mm-hmm. which we can touch on because obviously we're going to, you know, there is already, sure. spoilers, there's a question about the trailer anyway, but mm-hmm. we, uh, there's no way we could not talk about it this week. Okay. But um, there's already a bit that concerns me about it that's got a Harry Potter vibe to it. So when we get there, okay. I'll, I'll uh, sort of elucidate. Mm-hmm. In Tumbling Saber episode 88, it was mentioned about an hour and five minutes in, 20 minutes from the end, uh, when discussing the Resistance Season 2 trailer, that there had been rumblings of a droid army possibly associated with Lando. If Lando got into the droid business, could he provide battle droids that are reprogrammed to control the fleet of Star Destroyers? Yes, conceivably. I kind of... I don't dislike that as a premise. Mm-hmm. For like, Because obviously, if there's a... We only ha- still only have the speculation element of it, but mm-hmm. there's that big fleet of Star Destroyers just looking idle in space in yeah. the original... Te- in the first teaser. We still don't know what that's for, mm-hmm. and there's still that possibility. There's a there's a vain hope in my mind that it's got a sort of dark force element to it, where it's like they're not crude. Yeah. It's a race to see who can get what you know, mm-hmm. basically go in and get what you can. Like yeah, driving into it, running into a, a car park with loads of open cars and just seeing how many mm-hmm. you can drive away to to your own yeah. garage. That sort of yeah. level. Um, so I could see them using droids to kind of solve part mm-hmm. of that problem because they need a, the, the resistance has a numbers problem mm-hmm. like even if the even if the trailer notwithstanding there's a yeah. shot where there's resistance people together there's still not that many people yeah so um, i appreciate that obviously there may be people who aren't in shot that's understandably mm-hmm. conceivable and obviously there are quite a few shots in that put all the ships in it montage in the ta- in the trailer mm-hmm. and they all need a crew so there must be people but yeah. how how densely populated are those ships? I'd be inclined to think not so much. Mm-hmm. But I digress. What, what if Dark Force Caves all came about, excuse me, through the death of a Dark Side user being defeated? How would okay. that work? Would they all have to be vast amounts of energy like Palps? Papa Palpatine? Would it take a Dark Side user merely refusing to let go? What do you think? Uh, it's... It was Legends, it's, wasn't it? It's an idea. Wasn't it a Legends thing? Wasn't that a I Legends thing? I, I feel... remember a lot of things being done about the Dark Force games. It's possible. They kind of leave shadows of imprint, almost like stone tapes behind, don't they? Yeah. Because they had... Um, so my recollection is in the Thrawn, original Thrawn trilogy, mm-hmm. there was there were two elements about Dark Side users. One was that Palpatine mm-hmm. left a resonance in the Force above the forest moon of Endor. Yeah. That when people flew through it, they'd go, Ugh. Yeah. And the other one was, I'm, I'm sure I remember that Jorus Kaboth, or Jorus Kaboth, mm-hmm. because obviously, you know, spoilers, yeah. he wasn't the right one, told a story about being on Dagobah and fighting Yoda. Yeah, and that's that, vaguely familiar, but it's a long yeah. old time since I read those. And I'm sure I remember hearing or reading or finding somewhere that the Dark Side Cave had been caused by a fight between a power, two powerful mm-hmm. force users and the dark side one was the one who was dispatched. Yeah. So theoretically, whoever was dispatched would be the one that would populate mm-hmm. the, the force. I mean, the the light side user, if they were to be the one who was mm-hmm. bumped off, probably you'd, you'd just get a normal tree, wouldn't you? 
Yeah. Maybe it'd grow a bit nicer. It'd be about mm. the limit. Uh, and then James's last wondering, Palpatine never appeared in the last trailer for the Palpatine saga, did he? Only voice. My hope for no Palpy in person is still alive. I think he did, but mm-hmm. I'm still prepared for the possibility that he might, that it might be a vision or mm-hmm. so he might be the way I've kind of come to explain it is he might be on screen, but not, uh, mm-hmm. corporeal so he might be okay. part of a false vision or he might be a you know a, just a particularly yeah. um, solid ghost or some equivalent thereof yeah, gotcha. yeah. Um, that's kind of how I'm reconciling it in my head at the moment but I'm increasingly mm-hmm. worried that uh, that's not it Okay, I have some concerns and for reasons I won't go into on the air mm-hmm. uh, but, yeah I've seen it as well yeah yeah um, so, James, thank you for those. And if you like Weibel's Wanderings, James, mm-hmm. as in, one, listeners, if you like Weibel's Wanderings, and two, James, if you like the name, it can totally become a thing. Obviously, these are, this is a mm-hmm. backlog of a couple yeah. of weeks' worth, but usually James is good value for two, <laughs> for two or three a week. So, yeah. you know, there's no pressure. There's not going to be – we're never going to turn around and say you're obliged. But if you feel that you want to send them through, I will happily read them every time. Next message from Michael. Hello, Michael. Good day, Robin Brad. Sorry, good day, Michael. General nod of respect to all TSW Force hosts present at the time of broadcast. Still doing that, are we? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, mainly because I coined Force hosts. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I enjoy it. Uh, congratulations, Rob, on tying the knot. Thank you very much. Not literally. No, indeed. Um, I hope that both of you enjoyed your time away from the mic. We have certainly missed you while you've been offline. Oh. I'm in offline. I've got two other shows to do. <laughs> yeah, but they, keep up. Yeah, YouTube.com, Michael. Yeah. Emotionally Forcing yeah. YouTube. I'm, I'm the guy from YouTube. You must recognise me. All the Brad you can... I'm the man off the internet. All the Brad you could stand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure my co-host would agree, but yeah. All the Ian you can rely on. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm still just garbling the slogan every time we try and do something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now we just, whenever he's on, fire when ready or bring on the bad guys, we just need it. Just like the two and a half men thing, just to kind of go, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please make that a thing. <laughs> please. Um, uh, just wanted to let Brad know. Not just seen on the shows. Whenever he walks in the room, we all do Blake. it. Blake. <laughs> blue, 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 blue. <laughs> Make him think he's in a truly nightmarish version of the Truman Show. Oh, man. How has he not already come to that conclusion? Anyway. (laughs) Just wanted to let Brad know that the conversation on clothing merchandise, so we had that big discussion. Yeah, yeah, we did. This bit I do remember. We had a big discussion about toys, merch, and how we felt like they were dropping the ball. For various oh, okay. different yeah, reasons. Yeah, so, yeah, gotcha. yeah, um, yeah. Sorry um, to all our audience, but the thing is, me and Rob talk crap on such a regular basis. There is that. Um, I, 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 it's difficult to keep track of it all, to be honest. Yeah, also, I feel like, you know you know how when you finish with an etch sketch you give it a shake? Yep. That's my, Every that that's time. my brain the without the much prompting. Podcast. Yeah, that's my brain without much prompting, compounded further by... Two weeks away from the mic, oh, yeah. a week and probably a week and a half of that spent away from Twitter, just yeah. completely dis- disappeared. I, was, I jumped I on to a... watch the, the episode nine trailer, and that was about it for about yeah. a week. And uh, nice. um, I do enjoy my, my, my Twitter on the Saturdays because uh, if you if you subscribe to our Patreon, you get the episode of a show on a Saturday rather yes, than the Monday. Do. This is true. Um, but I don't back the Patreon because I'm on the show yeah. I kind of figure I, I contribute enough as it is that's fair and so I just wait for Monday and I'm, normally I have a fairly slow work day on a Monday so I can listen to the show anyway mm-hmm. then um, so but what will happen on Saturday and Sunday is I will get a load of tweets about people talking about stuff I've said on the podcast that I can't remember yeah and I'm just sat there going I have no memory of this place <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was this yeah. Are you, are you, uh, was I on this show? Yeah, I mean, this, this sounds like a conversation I might yeah. have been part yeah. of. Certainly sounds like that's certainly my name. Yeah, and it's certainly it's... highly likely that you know I was definitely on that recording. I give yeah. you that. Right. I, I would agree. Yeah, yeah, but no, it's true. Parts, it's, but... it's you know, but that this conversation I do remember because we talked in great depth about um, the Black Series as a proactive, not reactive line, which is what yes, I think is I where that. they're going wrong. 
And actually, mm-hmm. this week they announced a bunch of toys, and my fears are compounded further. It's all okay. Fallen Order, Mandalorian, characters we don't know if we care about yet, and yet they've okay. all got Black Series, and that's weird to me because that wasn't the yeah. point of them before. It's, it, it was always a bit fine. of a weird... It was like the really iconic heroes and cult figures. Now it's like, you get a toy, and you get a toy, and you get a toy, mm. and they're all covered in bees. I don't know what I mean. But uh, anyway... Michael continues. I, like many, am a man shopper. Okay? <laughs> I'm not familiar with the term. I'm guessing he shops for a lot of men. Who knows? I only have a few things on my to-do list while shopping. Check out the books, the movies, and the pop culture t-shirts. Then find a place to sit for a further 20 to 30 minutes while my wife continues to shop. Oh, I see. Pretty big. Uh, where have the Star Wars t-shirts gone? My wardrobe is feeling the pinch. I fully agree with you that there's a Star Wars... Uh, clothing void and marvel has swooped in mm-hmm. bring, bring it back disney i know you listen to tsw we want tees with general them. we want tees with general akbar surfing a wave chewy at the barbers and our children Ooh. wearing tie fighters in short fully concur with you brad oh, i wish more people would say that <laughs> do you want me to get it framed or something yeah Just for um that. i don't know can you can we get a firewood ready shirt from emotionally 14 store that's a good enough isn't it uh I don't know that you can currently. I've kind of given up on the Emotionally 14 store because right. they're, they're, their uh, service to us is pretty rubbish. Okay. Um, so, yeah. But, I mean, if people want one, I can certainly look into it. Yeah. Um, it's easily done. So, yeah, if people want Fire When Ready t-shirts, then podcast at emotionally14.com mm-hmm. and let us know. Listening to your conversation on Project Luminous, you sparked my imagination. I'm really glad this is happening for people because I have yeah. no recollection of this this, this particular discussion. <laughs> uh until we officially know what it all means, I've come up with a concept. What if Project Luminous begins in a post-Force Balance universe? The time of Jedi and Sith are gone. With that in mind, I've developed my own ending for Episode 9. hope it stimulates discussion. After many an adventure, we're near the climax of the movie. Oh, my. Rey succumbs to enorm- uh, overwhelming emotional toil. In order to shield herself, there's an implosion within the Force as she draws in and absorbs vast amounts of Force energy, insert amazing effects. Mm-hmm. Ray encounters both light and dark versions of her future at ever-increasing and interchanging speeds until, bam, fades away. Luke appears before Ray and provides her with comfort. Luke explains who she is. Ray has come from the Force. Ray briefly sees an image of Anakin who smiles before we see other people, presumably other past chosen ones, mm-hmm. in quotes. Ray's light images flicker... Uh, return before flickering away again. With more effort, Ray ignites imagery of peace. However, we glint small hints of darkness before they again fade. Ray comes to understand Anakin's failings. Anakin's face morphs from peaceful to anguished before he disappears fully. Ray wakes and releases a tidal wave of energy. Insert more cool effects. Lens flare with JJ as well. That's sorry, that was just me editorializing over the top. Yeah, that's cool. uh, an exhausted Kylo looks at Ray in pain and out of breath. Close. Credits. Project Luminous resides in a post race sacrifice universe. The energy force unleashed at the end of Episode 9, see what you did there, nice, mm-hmm. has separated the ability for sentient beings to feel and harness the force, although the force is still there. Other ancient magics begin to stir. Can't wait to hear your feedback and thoughts. All the best, Michael from Sydney. P.S. My dark five-a-side football team would definitely involve Jabba the Hutt in goal. I got yep. a real kick out of your team selections. Fantastic. Can't remember them, but I'm glad they were funny. Oh, they were really good. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that being funny. I don't remember what we said. That wasn't the sitting down dejected team, was it? No, that was that was some weeks before. Um, uh, no, sorry. the five-a-side football team was. I'm trying to think. I think it was just really funny. I don't know if there was any particular theme to it. Okay. Um, so Ray is a sacrifice at the end of episode nine. Yeah, it works. It's. I mean, it it does a job. You know, as in it, it resolves the story and it resolves that saga and it, mm-hmm. you know, the idea of that kind of forces kind of set, not, it's kind of detached from, from mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Kind of works. It's a thing. It's still there, but there's nobody who can actually wield it because it's been kind of, mm-hmm. maybe there's a, a lesson. Maybe the wills have yeah. popped back into existence to sort of say, sure. no, you know what? Nobody can have that anymore. They can't, yeah. they can't be trusted with it. It could totally, I mean, it could totally work. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like it fine. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, Michael, thank you very much for your mm-hmm. messages on this one. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I also would be happy to see more Star Wars t-shirts. I'm good with that as a as a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
partly because Primark shouldn't have all the fun, should it? In terms of being no, able to I buy mean, the they, cheap they stuff. They seem to have some decent shirts. But they have yeah. decent stuff. And the thing is, they're the kind of you can go somewhere like Forbidden Planet, and I often do. But their t-shirts tend to be a little on the pricey side for my liking. Mm-hmm. And it would, I wouldn't okay. mind so much if they were really, really hard wearing, but they're not always. Sometimes yeah. they can take a tumble dry and then they're ripped to pieces. Yeah. The uh, designs just get shredded off. Now, I grant you that you're not supposed to tumble dry t-shirts with logos on, but at the same time, I've got stuff to do. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, okay. You know, it's not the summertime anymore, so my flat doesn't cook clothes off as quickly yeah. as it normally would. Uh, and our next message comes from Ian. And it reads, hey guys, Ian here. Been a few weeks since I last wrote in, but still been listening. Hope you enjoyed your honeymoon in Sri Lanka, Rob. And I hope your wife is feeling better. Was it Delhi Belly? My wife also got sick, but in India, not Sri Lanka. Great place, though. So I think what he's talking about is there was a picture I shared on my Instagram of my wife in mm-hmm. uh, tucked up in bed with all the covers on her. The aircon turned up to hotter than it was outside. Yes, I remember. With a, tr- with a hoodie on, and she was Bless cold. Her. Yeah. I should clarify, she wasn't ill. She is just a mutant. Yeah. It was who, who's just cold no matter what. Yeah. Um, there's very few circumstances in which she's not cold um, in terms of temperatures and climates and stuff. It's just something mm-hmm. I've made my peace with. Um, Fair enough. Understandably so, otherwise the wedding would have been, you know, a bit of an awkward mm-hmm. and more emotionally draining affair. Well, absolutely. Um, yeah, but no, but thank you for the concern, Ian, but no, uh, the... Uh, food did not cause me any uh, discomfort and actually I was very very much enamoured with the food in Sri Lanka it was bloody Mm marvellous Ian continues so it's been a crazy week in the world of Star Wars it's actually been two or three Um, Mm. of course the trailer drop was the main event but it's led to loads of new ideas and theories being posted on the internet yeah they were always (laughs) Uh, prior to the trailer drop I read some interesting stuff about a wayfinder device that kept Sidious immortal and has the power to resurrect the dead Apparently, it's made up of two Sith artifacts that help find the Force Nexus in the Unknown Regions, plus the essence stroke soul of Force-sensitive beings. Have you heard about this before? No. Me neither. That is a completely new one on me. Um, Sith artifacts being used to keep souls and essences. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah, that kind of rings a bell. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not so sure about that otherwise. No, it seems very specific. Yeah. Uh, Ian continues, going back to the trailer, I loved it. Hope you did too. We'll get to that. I had a few concerns, like Ray being shown to be even more even more powerful in comparison to Luke, plus the C-3PO scene. Mm-hmm. At first, I thought he was referring to Ray and Poe as his friends, even though he hardly knows them. But after more thought, it seems like he's accessing memories from his database. He's probably looking at the original crew, Luke, Han, Leia, etc., Mm -hmm. I feel that he might be having his memory wiped or reset to access some lost information. What do you think? I read one theory that suggests that he's being restored to a previous setting which will allow him to read old Sith text. This might also explain the red eyes seen from a previous trailer stroke teaser. I've heard something to that effect too, Mm -hmm. as in that he's going to be wiped. And it, it makes sense. You know, the idea that he's having to say goodbye to his friends suggests that for a droid, that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's kind of... Yeah, it's it's one of those things I could imagine. Yeah. It makes sense. But, um, yeah, in terms of the idea of the read, the old Sith text, that's something I... Like I say, I've heard that banded... I've heard that doing the rounds mm-hmm. as, a, as a suggestion of what might be happening yeah. there. Um, and the Red Eyes thing, you know, if it's part of a boot cycle, maybe that makes sense. Maybe... Maybe, yeah. May, um, you'd it's... think he'd have to change the bulbs. I'm surprised that he can do that. It feel, there's a lot of it which felt very much like it. Was certainly in like the late '90s TV, there was always a scene in an episode where a character would say something like, "This changes everything," purely to be included in the trailer of the previous episode. Yeah, like that um, movie trailer I sent you, where it's like, "Yeah, the, this is that event." <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's that's entirely possible too. Mm-hmm. Um, again, for reasons I won't go into on the air, out of service to our listeners, I will steer clear of some stuff that I've also read that kind of okay. annoyed Star me. Wars leaks, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, 
yeah, I didn't necessarily mean to, and now I can't stop. Yeah, uh, same. Yeah. I also read a couple of articles referring to a dagger that Ray is holding in the scene where Ray and Kylo smash the stand that holds Vader's helmet on top. Oh, oh, oh. People seem to think this is the dagger of Mortis. I remember the dagger from Clone Wars, so it got me pretty excited. Mm-hmm. In the show, it's used to call to kill immol- immortal force-controlling beings. With Sidious most likely being immortal, this would make a lot of sense. Could mm-hmm. there possibly be some kind of the inscription on the dagger that 3PO needs to read? Totally. Yeah, <laughs> possibly, not, right? Yeah. yeah, why not? Could this possible thing that's possibly in this movie possibly be handled by one of the characters in it? There you go. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. This is your answer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I think... I'm not convinced it's the Dagger of Mortis because the Dagger of Mortis, mm-hmm. from from my limited recollection of that arc, is is not something... I don't think it's even got a handle. All the shots I've seen of it, or certainly people are sharing the doing the rounds. Yeah. All, it's just like a shard of material. Now, whether yeah. that's a, just a particularly bad angle, and maybe it does have a, a, shot, um, a um, shaft, it seems like if it was... I, I could believe it if it was reintroducing a premise that was historically canon, then decanonized, and now they're bringing it back in at a different mm-hmm. capacity. But the Mortis arc is canon because it's part of the Clone Wars series. Yes. And the Clone yeah. Wars series is canon. So yes. the idea of it going, hey, here's a thing that actually didn't look anything like this, but it's here because reasons. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of yeah, stuff that in the post... Episode 9 in, isn't going to rely on something like the Mortis trilogy. No, unless they take some... I mean, if it's as long as they're rumouring, who oh might, then um, they could explain it. They've got time. Now, whether or not they're going to spend time with Thalassar and Milking instead, maybe there's a whole fleet of them this time. Who knows? Who knows? A, somebody's yeah. going to visit Thalassar and Farm. Um, Maz Kanata's new business venture. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I don't know is the answer. But um, I think they could explain it away a little bit like uh, I, I realised what we agreed about ten minutes ago. Deathly Hallows Part One. <laughs> there's that really. I, I don't mean it in the story context, but there's a really nice animated explanation of the three brothers and the three oh, artifacts. Yeah, it's, it's one of the best bits of the films. Yeah, yeah. It's, fa- it's fantastic. That bit. Mm-hmm. It's so well done. It's got yeah. this wonderfully Tim Burton esque kind of visual art style. And it's still tucked in nicely to the rest of the film. Mm-hmm. They could do something like that. Yeah. Not that. But, but something like but, that. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Not that. Not, but not that, but that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> not that, but, yeah. Jaws? <laughs> Unless it's Sarah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think the likelihood is that it's going to be... Mm-hmm. So the thing about the inscription on the dagger... That could totally be what 3PO needs to read, or maybe it's where to find yeah. that dagger. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Um, Maps of Skywalker, I don't know. Yeah, it could be that. Um, finally, getting back to our previous talks regarding the prophecy, after seeing the final trailer, I'm beginning to think JJ will revisit it to tie things up. Here's why I think so. Part of the prophecy says, the danger of the past is not past, but sleeps in an egg. When the egg cracks, it will threaten the galaxy entire. Mm-hmm. When righteous lose the light, evil once dead shall return. That when the force itself sickens, past and future must split and combine. A chosen one shall come, born of no father, and through him will ultimate balance in the force be restored. So here's my take on it. The danger of the past is Sidious. He sleeps in the iceberg planet, the egg, that we saw in the trailer. The show in the throne room and all of the Emperor seem to have blue light like the iceberg. We saw cracking ice when the Star Destroyer rises from an icy ocean. The righteous lost the light, Luke. Uh, so that's the resistance losing Luke. And Sidious, mm-hmm. evil once dead, has returned. Not sure what the force itself sickens means, but could, must split and combine, refer to Kylo and Rey in some way. Do they join forces to face Sidious? Sidious says, you're coming together as you're undoing. Coincidence? However, I can't think why the Chosen One passage would come last, as Anakin has been and gone. Maybe he will return. Or maybe Ray and Kylo were the separated essence of Vader, his light and dark side. Maybe they must combine to restore the Force to its rightful balance. As always, super long email. I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of it, plus your overall thoughts on the final trailer. Looking forward to your next podcast, guys. Well, you don't have to look any further. It's here right now. Yeah, you're, 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 you're listening to it already. Isn't it fun? Magic! So before we touch on the trailer, the prophecy stuff. Right, yeah. 
So the danger of the past is not past, but sleeps in an egg. That is weird. That is a weird phrase, and I don't understand. <laughs> it's it's there's symbolism, and then there's just weird stuff, isn't there? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, when the egg cracks, uh, it will threaten the galaxy. Entirely. I didn't take it as being <laughs> as specific as Sidious. I thought the danger of past is not past, but sleeps in an egg was referring to the Sith in general. So this is cause... kind of where I'm going. So when the yeah. righteous lose the light, evil once dead shall return. When the Jedi have lost their way because of excessive bureaucracy and Yep. They are unwilling to uh, deviate from their ways. Even once mm-hmm. dead, the Sith shall return. Yeah. yeah. When the Force itself sickens, i.e. their ability to use the Force is clouded as, by the dark as, side. As referenced in Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Past and future must split and combine. Anakin and Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Maybe. That one's, Possibly, that's, yeah, the, that's yeah. the most tenuous bit of my read. Yeah, I, I like that take on it. Yeah. A, a chosen one shall come, born of no father... And through him will ultimate balance in the force be restored. It was always Anakin. It was always Anakin, and it is mm-hmm. Anakin. And if, and that's the kind of thing. So I, I've touched on this. We've talked about it a couple of times. I've touched about it when I've been asked about it on other shows. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of stuff. If they start tinkering with that, I will be like, no, it's not for me anymore, and yeah, I will done. walk on, and I will just yeah. enjoy the stuff I've already got, and just that will yeah. be it. I'm, when they start saying no, what you know, like no, we want we mm-hmm. want to market this character. So we're going to completely re-architect the story. That's there's a difference between expanding and building and improving on what's been there before and undoing it. Mm-hmm. And they've already flirted with that, I think, enough that they could do with reining it in a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my so that's my read of the prophecy as it's written there. Um, and I mean the the sleeping an egg when the egg cracks thing. It could just be. It's, it's hibernating. It's no, it didn't. Mm-hmm. You didn't eradicate the Sith when you thought you eradicated mm-hmm. the Sith. Yeah, that's it. That's kind of yeah. As that was my take on it, but yeah. you know, this is very open to interpretation. In no way, yeah, uh, am, am I implying that Ian is wrong? No, no, exactly. And the thing is, you know, there especially is, the whole point is this is a thing that characters in the saga are misinterpreting. Yeah, and the, you know, this is this is true. And also, mm-hmm. there's not to say they couldn't have another prophecy. About something yeah. else that there's, you know, maybe it, maybe it goes back even further. Mm-hmm. That's one from, you know, even further back in in the histories that just nobody yeah. ever read. And maybe that's what C three PO is reading in mm-hmm. Sith, in Sith, yeah. Sithies. Um, so we've teased it as we've been going along. Episode nine trailer dropped while okay. while I was away. Obviously, we didn't talk about it at the time. Yeah. General thoughts? Uh, I was spectacularly whelmed. Okay. Anything in particular um, that caused it to be whelming? Oh, I didn't find it particularly. Uh, the, the previous trailer was one that excited me more. Okay. Um, there was just there was, there was a lot of footage there, but nothing really new that caught my imagination or caught my enthusiasm. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, weird, but... It is a bit weird. Like, I'm, I have to say, I had, maybe not to the same degree, but I have a similar mm-hmm. feeling. I've watched it a few times now. Yeah. And my main qualm with it is I don't understand the plot. Like, there's no, no, there's I, no I don't plot. think I did for any of the... Uh, it's only really uh, the spin-off movies. We did Rogue One, we knew what that was sure. about. Yep. Uh, Solo, even for off trailer, we were like, oh, okay, it's going to be a heist movie, and yeah. it was a heist movie. Sure. Um, even like the Force Awakens trailers were vague as all hell. The Force Awakens trailer was deliberately vague as all hell. I, they, all, that, they've all, they all have been, so this isn't exactly back in the trend, is what I'm saying. I don't know that Last Jedi is, as mm-hmm. I think Last Jedi, you know, as, I've, as we've, we've done a fair bit of discussion on this film, um, I think the the Last Jedi trailer, much like the film, is not as clever as it thinks it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, obviously, at the time, it's you know you don't have the context of the film to to draw on. But now, when you look at the look at the film as it is and the the yeah. trailer, it's actually not that far removed in terms of the 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 overall story beats. Mm-hmm. There are some twists in there. There are some things yeah. that are deliberately left out to surprise you. Mm-hmm. Much like Force Awakens, Force Awakens did, definitely had that because oh, the whole yeah. yeah the whole premise of that was you know people are looking for Luke. You didn't necessarily get that from mm. any of the trailers for Force Awakens, no. And that was deliberate, you know. Mm-hmm. And in, in the same way, 
all the marketing and everything obfuscated the fact that Ray would be the one with the force. Yeah. They set Finn up as the person to the point yeah, where totally. even in the, I remember this getting a lot of, you mm-hmm. know, people were upset about this. Can you imagine on the internet? Yeah. Um, there was the, the Star Wars Monopoly shipped before the film. Yes. And Finn had the lightsaber and everybody who <laughs> saw the film forgot that it was a surprise. Yeah. Okay. Because once you've seen the film, you don't, some people stop caring about that. Mm-hmm. And they started going, well, hang on, where's Ray? And a not unreasonable question if you've seen the film, because you know. And in the same way, it's like, oh, well, where are all the action figures? It's like, well, we can't ship her with the lightsaber. So it's a spoiler. Because yeah. it's a spoiler. It's actually to the point where a marketing pro- a product is a spoiler for the film. Mm-hmm. It's like having, I'm trying to think of an equivalent, a detachable Snoke, the well, last Jedi figure. Well, yeah, it's well, it when Right, it comes apart in two pieces. To... <laughs> But if you go back to like the Phantom Menace, everyone knew about the double-ended lightsaber Maul has, and I do kind of wonder if maybe if that should have been kept under wraps a little bit. Can you yeah. imagine a proper reveal of that? Yeah, or even just if it cuts before he ignites the second blade. So yeah. people are like, well, hang on, he's holding that a bit strange. Like, I wonder if that's... Yeah. Ooh, I wonder what that's going to be. Like, yeah. kind of get that... I mean, we're talking yeah. 99 is kind of pre-internet in the... Mm-hmm. It's certainly Effectively, in the yeah. Way you could probably watch now. the trailer in 140p on StarWars.com. Yeah, but you would have had to wait sort of six and a half hours for it to buff yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, kids, we're not even joking, man. No, I know. As a fun aside, like, just before we started recording, I was updating an app on my Mac to mm-hmm. do the call recording, and it was a five and a half meg download, which took about eight minutes. I was like, <laughs> is this being hosted in 1996? <laughs> Madness. Um, turns out it's because there was a system update going on in the background as well. I didn't know this okay. at the time, but it's yeah. that was a funny thought, you know, I thought I'd yeah. share. Um, I enjoyed it. Yeah. So, anyway, so touching back on the main thing, my main thing is it's not even that I, I, I get, I take your point that there is a little bit of smoke and mirrors going on when it comes to, mm-hmm. comes to the films because so much of it is, they're kind of relying on so much of it being a cinema going mm-hmm. experience. Yeah. But, I don't know, there's just this vibe from this one that I don't know what's even vaguely going on. No. It's and mess. that's, you know, if that's how they want to, if clearly that's how they want to play it, right? Because they have, you know, estimates are saying two and a half hours of footage to that they could use and are not. Yeah. So they've clearly chosen this deliberately. Mm. And this is assuming, as you rightly point out in the past, that all this stuff is in the final, you know, this... All these shots are the final So much shots. of this could be done for the trailer. Yeah. Yes. And it, it could be a, a different They've got angle. priors for that. Yeah. I mean, the, the the great one, apart from the Rogue One one, which is mm-hmm. one that was not even ever in there, in the final cut, Yeah, is the one from Force Awakens where Kylo's sort of striding through the forest in his hood and it's, he just ignites yeah. the crossguard lightsaber. Not that, it. yeah. that, it's in the film, but you don't see it because you see, it happens off screen. Because Ray yeah. and Finn are running through the woods, and you hear the lightsaber go. That's it. Yeah. From the other side of the forest, and then you and then you pan across, and he's mm-hmm. there. So yeah. they obviously did something with it, but yeah. it's not the shot that's in the final film. Yeah. And there's, I feel like there's something like that in Last Jedi as well, where the shot that's in the trailer is is similar but not quite the same. Or shot from a different angle or a different take. Yeah, something like that. Um, but like, as you say, there is form for this stuff, so mm-hmm. there is a bit. There could be some of that going on. And so yeah. there's a possibility that there's some shots that are chosen for that deliberately. Um, as I'm kind of watching the trailer play out a little bit now, su- such things could include things like Ray jumping around through the mm-hmm. forest and then jumping over and then climbing up the Death Star bits yeah. and what we assume is the Death Star wreckage. Looks like it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but generally, like I say, it's not that I didn't like it, because there's some really there's some really impressive looking stuff in there. There's some intriguing stuff in there. There mm-hmm. are some bits that make me uneasy and apprehensive about mm. oh no, what are we in for? Yeah, like, there are bits. Mean. There are bits where I've you know I've heard rumblings, and obviously it's hard to know what's true until the film mm-hmm. comes out, right? This is the thing I was touching yeah. on earlier. Yeah, some of these bits and pieces I've heard sound bloody awful. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, that's why I'm yeah. apprehensive. And it's tricky because I've had these things kind of potentially spoiled for me. Mm. And if they're true, it might... Sounds balls. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. Like, it's it's actually a little bit unsettling. It's like... Yeah, I know what you mean. And I can see why 
I was right in the past to avoid the leaks. Yeah. I didn't mean to catch a leak this time round, and so I caught one, and now that I've opened the floodgates, it's mm-hmm. just kind of happening to me. Okay. So now I'm just like, oh, hang on. What happens is I see, because on Reddit, for example, mm-hmm. they've got the um, people use the spoiler text thing where they sort of do it, they highlight it over the top in the same color. So if you mm-hmm. want to cl- see it, you have to click it. Yeah. And if it's vaguely like, oh, I don't think I've heard this one, click. <laughs> so mm-hmm. okay. I've lost that kind of desire to like protect myself from from the um, from the leaks now because I've mm-hmm. seen a couple, and so it doesn't matter anymore to me. Yeah, like, no, it's been, and it's a shame because I do feel like it's probably meant I'm going to go into the film with more cynicism. Mm-hmm. Because normally I don't. I go in completely fresh, and you know, considering mm-hmm. that I've been doing this show for. A while. Three of the, three of the four movies, mm-hmm. and I've managed to stay spoiler free on mm-hmm. almost all of them. Mm-hmm. It's quite a shame. It's a shame in a way that of the, all the ones to get spoilers on, potentially this one, yeah. this is the one, the one that's supposed to wrap it all up, the one that's supposed to tie it all together. Mm-hmm. There's some really nice shots in this trailer. This is the mm-hmm. thing: the ice planet stuff, the Tie fighters flying through with what looks like a reflection, but a lot of people are speculating is actually just a floating mm-hmm. ice island. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, totally. On a visual level, it's awesome looking. Yeah. The bit where Ray's facing down what ends up being Kylo sort of striding through the rain looks incredible. Mm. Yeah, of course it does. There's, you know, Lando's in it. I like that. Yeah. There's going to be some, you know, there's going to be some sad moments like there's layer shots in this. So obviously people mm-hmm. are going to be like, oh. Yeah, I got you. And like I say, there's stuff that intrigues me, but there's also stuff that looks really daft. Yeah. Like, in what world am I to get excited about horses riding down the Star Destroyer in space? I'm so glad you've said that. It's, it's, I can't get excited about it. I just can't. Mm-hmm. I tried my best and it just looks silly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I realize that it's wizards in space, but I think a, a people, you, a people let too much go because of that. <sighs> And okay, stuff yeah. like that is evidence to me of like yeah. there's a little bit of too much. The other thing, which has just popped up as I'm kind of like I say, I've got this trailer kind of cycling through. There's two things about mm-hmm. this trailer that make me uneasy. One of them is based on one of the things I've seen spoilers for, or mm-hmm. potential spoilers for. The first one is that um when it's there's a shot where you see Kylo kind of looking quite intense mm-hmm. and moody, you cut to Ray being faced down by what looks like a chair walking towards her, like a yeah. mech, and in it kind is of, the yeah. tell is the telltale hood of one Papa Palpatine. Yeah. And that to then let's say the idea of him turning up again is not good to me. I don't mm-hmm. I don't want the physical palpatine back because it's just Yeah. It makes it this is the kind of feeling I've had. And this is part of the reason that this trailer has kind of been a bit of a weird one for me. Increasingly it's made these films feel like three movies that are in sequence and not a trilogy. Yeah. That's the kind of vibe I've got right now. There might be three perfectly good, perfectly cool Mm -hmm. movies in their own right, but they don't feel like they're tied together to me at all. And like I say, this whole notion of poetry rhyming, no, what's happening is poetry is being copied. That's not poetry, Mm -hmm. that's plagiarism. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's kind of... Who's a a difference, if Lord? Exactly. Darth plagiarism is... um, I mean, he shares a lot of traits, suspiciously, <laughs> with um, others. Which suspicious the heart. Well, why would you say that? That's interesting yeah. that you bring him up. Uh, so that's one of the things that makes me un- uneasy about mm-hmm. this, because I'm, let's say, the stuff that bo- is going to bother me is the things where it's, it's kind of undoing George's good work, mm-hmm. right? And people give him a, have given him a lot of stick, and in some cases rightly so yeah. over the years, but he is responsible. He is the maker. Totally. You know, and if he's if his legacy is not sacrosanct in fundamental ways, right? Little things I can deal with, mm-hmm. but in fundamental ways, like no, Anakin's sacrifice meant less because we want Ray to be a hero because marketing, mm-hmm. because we got little girls interested in this movie now. Yeah. If you're going to undo the the theme of this trilogy for me is undoing the is not even undoing the. It's undoing the the heroics of the past. Mm-hmm. They turned Han into a deadbeat dad. Yeah, okay. They turned Luke into, you know, a bitter old waster. Mm-hmm. They're going to turn Anakin into 
you know, oh, the ultimate, you know, the ultimate evil becomes ultimate good. Actually, no, he doesn't. Mm-hmm. He's like, he just, he, he doesn't, he has a go, but he needs some nobody to turn up and finish the job. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't know, it makes me a little bit cynical. Okay. The second one is uh, further, a little bit further on in the trailer. There's a bit where Ray's got the lightsaber sort of in battle. Yeah, you know, she's ready to fight. Yeah. And um, Luke says something to the effect of the Force will be with you. And then you hear Leia say always. Yeah. Now, my sense and my fear for this is we're going to get back to the Potter. Deathly Hallows Part 2 he walks. He's walking to his what he thinks is his death. Turns out he's a horcrux. Mm-hmm. Spoilers. Um, yeah. He's walking to his what he believes to be his death, and the philosopher's stone is in the little case thing, and mm-hmm. all the ghosts of his past come out and walk along with him. Yeah, I, hate that. I think we're in for that. I think we might be. I have a bad feeling we're in for that. Mm-hmm. All the light side people of the past, just with Ray kind of like at yeah. the front. Yeah, I think that's like just it's, I don't, oh because it seems so predictable <laughs> I wonder if we are I think it's the, the only things I've seen implying that I read like fan fiction mm. and I would like to believe this is being held to a higher standard than that I would like to believe that too and I hope you're right but those are the two things out of the trailer that make me uneasy mm-hmm. because like I said the, the Palpatine thing if it's Ian McDermott's on screen, but his character, mm-hmm. but the the character is dead. I'm good with That's that. That's one thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that because there are ways. You know, it's kind of like, if anything, I feel like him, him being still alive, raises too many questions. They probably haven't got time for. Mm-hmm. Him being so powerful and his essence being so powerful that he can influence things long after his death, actually, for me, makes him more compelling. Yeah. Because his character has more, you know, there's he's the dark side user who's come the closest to transcending death. Mm-hmm. If it's just, yeah. if it's just what I, f- my biggest fear is, I'm alive because reasons. Yeah, that's what I feel. Uh, no, no, I need a reason for it. Yeah, or, yeah, or an, just an explanation, like an explanation just, of something. I, I I believe J.J. Abrams respects and loves the original trilogy enough not to do that. I would hope so too. But I just have this fear. That's fine, but um, yeah. I hope it's unfounded. Yeah, well, I don't know. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of little things about this trailer that make me uneasy. Mm. And let's say, that's not to say there aren't cool bits, much like, you know, much as we... Talk about our least favorite Star Wars films. There are always good mm-hmm. bits in them. There is always stuff that's either visually impressive or cool. Or yeah, totally. Just good stuff. The enjoyable yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I don't know with this one. Mm-hmm. Like it's just there's just lots of little things nagging at me. Yeah. Um. But we shall see. Yeah. Now the Mandalorian. As the trailer yes. goes, I like to put one more. I. I like it. I, I think this series is kind of, I think it's slightly more made for, not us, because it's not for us, as in, yeah. you know, like the, the quote from George is very, you know, very mm-hmm. prescient. It's, it's, it's for kids turning into adults who kind of need a, a moral, yeah. a moral steer mm-hmm. rather than say hyper ham fisted. Mm-hmm indoctrination but that's a yeah i got you uh but in terms of the tone of the mandalorian stuff it feels like it's made more with the older fans in mind it has an eu feel to it has somehow a gr- there's, there's a grime about yeah, it like uh, rogue yeah, one has that grime too i think that's what's been missing from a sequel trilogy is it's quite it's quite star trek and quite clean yeah that is true it's all very um very shiny yeah. Everything's pristine and sheen and yeah. leaves um teams things clean. <laughs> Winning. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um but yeah, the Mandalorian has much more of a uh mm-hmm. my I will be interested to see if they can keep the 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 tone of that going in a way that doesn't just feel like um what do they call it in wrestling? 
just where it's like constant high spots. Spot, it's oh, spot, spot fest. fest. Yeah. yeah. I don't want the Mandalorian to feel like a set piece fest. No, I mean, it's ten hours, eight to ten hours long, but they've yeah. got to put the flashy bits in the trailer. Sure. So, that, yeah. That's fine. As long as that's kind of, I'm not, mm-hmm. on the one hand, I'm not saying I want, or I just want it to be, mm-hmm. like, or I want to have seen all the good bits already. That's yeah, not what you. I'm saying. <laughs> what I am saying is I would like there to be, there has to be some mm-hmm. ebb and flow. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, a lot of people rag on Game of Thrones and we'll touch on, you know, some of the fallout Use, from that yeah. in, a, in a few. Um, a lot of people rag on Game of Thrones now, but one of the things it did really well, certainly in the first few series, is balance that mm-hmm. exposition and the plot-heavy character stuff with something you talk about mm-hmm. from one. In, even if it's just in one episode, there's some event that you, that, yeah. you know, something like the Red Wedding is still permeated in pop culture now, several yeah. several years after the fact. Totally, yeah, something like that is significant because it's like such a big deal. Mm. And it builds up and builds up and builds up. And you it's one of those things, I think, one of the strengths of the, the original sort of earlier series, less so in the, less, less so in the later ones, although I still like them, mm-hmm. is that they did a really good job of doing that usual suspects thing where if you watch it and then you see the big event happen, you go back and you look for the things that you, the signs that you missed because you didn't know. Mm-hmm. You're more inclined, I think, to go back and watch the first few series of Game of Thrones, looking for those little seeds that then take yeah. root and then turn up in season three, part you know, mm-hmm. episode nine or whatever. Yeah, I think you know what I'm hoping for from the Mandalorian is something like that, where it's you know, there's going to be some from the fact that there's, like I say, there's lots of rumblings about Clone Wars flashbacks or that sort of era of young mm-hmm. Mandalorian. I think that you know, I'm hoping that's going to be kind of peppered throughout so there's going to be mm-hmm. a fleshed out character i can get invested in and care about yeah admittedly i'm gonna to have to care about them three four months after everybody else in the world but i'm still you know, i'm hoping for something like that where i can get invested and, and build up a sort of you know i want to i want to like these mm-hmm. characters and yeah you know if they if they're written well i generally will give them a fair shake if they're mm-hmm. you know thinly veiled fan fiction or self-inserts <laughs> then yeah. I'm going to be less likely to give it a fair shake because, mm-hmm. you know, I find it harder to care if other people clearly don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the final trailer is a shorter one, but uh, they dropped the launch trailer for the Force, uh, Fallen Order. Oh, yes. And yeah. I'll tell you what. Oh, man. It looks it fantastic. Did. Okay. It looks absolutely superb. There are some weird facial animations going on, mm-hmm. but... The action looks really cool. The weapon stuff looks great. It looks like it's semi-linear. Okay. As in you can do um, you can do the missions in different sequence, so it's not so coupled t- t- so tightly. Kind of like Mafia or something like that. Then. Yeah, exactly. So you can do yeah, some okay. of the bits and pieces you're going to be able to do. Um, there's Branches what, out and branches in again. Yeah. It looks yeah. like there's Dathomir Night Sisters on in it. <sighs> Lovely. Yeah. Um, and there's force powers and, you know, some cool ships. Mm-hmm. The lightsaber combat looks like it's kind of cinematic without being too... Mm-hmm. It's not hacky slashy, but it's also not Dark Souls because okay. I need somewhere between the two. Otherwise, I'm not yep. going to have fun. Yep, no, I'm going to be struggling I really for get it. it. Yeah, I'm going to be... Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be... Um, I don't want to spend too have to spend too much time getting guard. Yeah, um, I get you. Star Wars should make me feel... As a gamer, Star Wars should make me feel powerful. Yes, like Force Unleashed, so that, something first, like Arkham Asylum does. Yeah, first Ar- uh, the first Force Unleashed did a really good job with the Vader prologue, mm. where I spent probably about three quarters of the time in the first th- three four hours just on Kashyyyk, just just mm-hmm. dispatching Wookies as Vader, just because yeah. I wanted to see. I'd heard so much about the Euphoria engine and the physics <laughs> involved that I just wanted to see that I wanted to test the limits of what it could yeah. do, and so I spent. You know, I want to be able to do something like that, where it's like if you just want to. Mm-hmm. You just want to ask about in the world Don't with choke the powers, Kashyyyk. Yeah. choke Kashyyyk, the whole planet if you can, mm-hmm. um, just in one, just squeeze it shut. Yeah. Um, just to really upset Kiadi Mundi, <laughs> then yeah. <laughs> I'm now just mentally picturing Kiadi Mundi having a video game review channel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Who yeah. would do such a thing? <laughs> What about the Darth attack on the Wookiees? Yeah, indeed. Of course, he was dead by then. So. Yeah, yeah, there is that. Um, 
but yeah, the Fall, the, the Fallen Order trailer looks fantastic. I'm really, mm-hmm. I pre-ordered it. I don't, you know, I know a lot of people like to dunk on EA, but mm-hmm. for not me, wondering. this no, not me. I will give them a fair shake if I think it's worth doing. And in this case, mm-hmm. I am excited about Fallen Order, and I cannot yes. wait to play it. Awesome. I will because it's me and I'm an idiot. But yeah, um, I get it. You know, I, I mean, see my pile that contains like Witcher Three, God of War, Red Dread Redemption Two, Spider Man. You know, and oh, this... I've, uh, my brother lends me stuff as well. Yeah. I've, I'm never going to do all this before PS Six comes out. And the list goes on. So yeah, the other the piece of news. Mm-hmm. We are now helmless. In the new trilogy, is that oh, I wonder where that was going? No, yeah, yeah. Um, 2020. So, when uh, if after Christmas people get an announcement from Talkstar, we're saying we're gonna we're gonna be slowing down the frequency. I want you to remember moments like this, where the movie that we were looking forward to in three years' time, which was going to be the next movie we had, has now lost its directing pair. It's you know, it's a weird world when it comes to you know Star Wars it's uh, but anyway, anyway yeah so for those who have been living under a rock on a cave on Mars with their fingers in their ears mm-hmm. Benioff and Vice are no longer affiliated with the new Star Wars trilogy they are going to be doing they're doing something exclusively in TV instead which is not Star Wars related mm-hmm. so yeah they're no longer they're no longer part of the uh, the upcoming Star Wars catalogue okay. A lot, of, a lot of people are excited about, are, are really happy about this, and I find this kind of a little bit perverse. Really? They're quite yeah. a big names. So I thought people would be. They are. Annoyed. I think what's happened is, this is my sense of it. Obviously, there's a lot more people mm-hmm. upset about Game of Thrones series eight than previous series. Yeah, series eight has has kind of come across a little bit rushed, a little bit phoned in. It's things like, yeah. you know, in previous series, I don't think you would have got things like there's a coffee cup really obviously in shot. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've only like seen the first series, of Dragon but I was aware of all this stuff, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's that's kind of one of the things that's motivating it. Um, so there's people who are like, they are they are talentless, they can't do their jobs, forgetting the whole mm-hmm. previous, you know, making Game of Thrones this enormous pop culture phenomenon People have short memories when it comes to this. Yeah, stuff. they t- totally do. Um, it, you know, a, another good example of this is Colin Trevorrow does Jurassic World, and everybody's, and then he's announced for episode nine. Everybody's really excited, and then he does mm-hmm. an, an independent film, not affiliated in the slightest with either any fictional yeah. universe that's already established or um, a big money property, and it mm-hmm. tanks, and everybody wants him removed from Star Wars. I'd be interested to see. If the same thing happens to Ryan Johnson, if Knives Out bombs, I don't think it will. And I think there's a double mm-hmm. standard at play, which is why I don't think it will. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting that, you know, the same people who would be baying for the blood of Colin Trevorrow and Benioff and Rice yeah. would probably give Ryan a pass. Yeah. Even though he's had a go. Yeah. Like he's actually been able to do it. And like I say, irrespective of what you think about what he's done. Mm-hmm. With Star Wars, with the license, he has at least had a chance to do it. Whereas there's like this reluctance to kind of give some of these other names a shake. Mm-hmm. It's peculiar to me, you know. It's, yeah. Like I say, it's peculiar to me that people take such perverse pleasure in. Oh, now I don't get my films. Ha ha ha! Like, yeah, that yeah. really. Yeah, you showed them. Well done. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I just don't understand it. Like, no. This kind of notion of ha ha ha. We've. We did. We did it. Like they're yeah. off our team. Like it's a little bit. How best to put this? I don't know. It's a really good. It's a really good franchise. But it's just a bunch of movies and TV. Mm-hmm. Like it shouldn't turn you into a bad. It shouldn't turn you into a, an awful person. Yeah. You shouldn't become. And you know, I don't aim this in any particular direction. This is just generally speaking. If your favorite movie stroke tv stroke video game stroke music makes you a complete tool have a word with yourself Mm -hmm. you know like if it's that put to the point where you're relishing in the unemployment of people Mm -hmm. you don't know i've been ruminating on this a lot recently because i think it I, i put a lot of the blame is the wrong word because I don't think it's necessarily their fault but i put a lot of the reasoning behind this kind of weird world uh, social media's feet 
Mm-hmm. And the reason I say it is because I think there is this weird kind of level of like, oh, I follow Mark Hamill on Twitter. That means we're mates. Yeah. Like that means we're friends. Like, don't get me wrong. If Mark Hamill liked a tweet of mine, mm-hmm. I'd be really happy because yeah. it's Mark Hamill and that's awesome. Yeah. Like, you know, if, if I've had retweets and re- and likes mm-hmm. and replies from people I know, like no, yeah. recognized names in my world. Yeah. You know, like songwriters I like or the, um, mm-hmm. Craig Ferguson, one of those late yeah. night TV hosts that I'm fond of. Mark Spriggs too. Mark Spriggs too. Exactly. I enjoy those mm-hmm. things when they happen, but we're not mates just because of that. Yeah. If I get a DM from Marcus Brigstock saying, I had a really nice time chatting with you, mm-hmm. let's be friends, I'll explore this. But <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong. But I don't think it happens based off the fact that I like a tweet of his or he likes a tweet of mine. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that way. And I think one of the things, I think there's this weird kind of disconnect from reality that's caused by these platforms having it, giving us yeah. connected access to somebody who actually we have no connection to whatsoever. Yeah. You know, and it's weird to me. It's always weird to me when I see somebody famous out and about, but my thing is always I'm going to do as much as I can to not bother them. Mm-hmm. The one exception was a YouTuber I really liked. We, you were there that day. I was, yes. And it was just such a surprise to me to see them in the context I saw them in. Yeah. That I sort of it threw my usual rules out the window. And I also thought I kind of feel like they're not quite famous enough that they get this all the time. Yeah, I so I might you. be able to get away with it. Like I've always wondered if the people who've got the best level of fame are people like Felicia Day and Will Wheaton. Yeah, because they're famous enough that if somebody's familiar in the space, they're like a legend. Mm. But they're also obscure enough that even somebody like me, who has watched the Guild and things mm-hmm. like that, will see Felicia Day, and I did in London once because she was, I guess, on holiday. Mm-hmm. Um, walked past her and went, is that? <laughs> I was like, it can't be her. Yeah. She's like, she looks way shorter than I would imagine she'd be. Yeah. I mean, I did a bit of research and looked at like Twitter and stuff. And she's like, I love London. I was like, Oh, well that's probably, it was probably was her. Then. Yeah. But you know, she's got that level of fame and we'll, let's like say Will mm. Wheaton's kind of similar where I guess maybe for him, it's not the same because he's been on big bang and stuff. And that's kind mm-hmm. of got a bit more broad mainstream. And, appeal. And, and you know, Star Trek, yeah, but I don't know if TNG has got that broad mainstream appeal. Uh, of the Star Trek, I, I, thought, I thought it was most popular with Star Trek, but I might be wrong. I'm, I'm far from a Trek expert. No, I think you, uh, I think you're probably, probably right that it's probably one of the more more popular Treks. But I think mm. the only reason that somebody like Patrick Stewart is famous is because of X Men. In that, in in the in the yeah, TV probably, and probably different things to different ages, people. Yeah, yeah, but I think he's more well known for things like. X Men than mm-hmm. Star Trek. But now, yeah, okay, yeah. I could see that maybe. Maybe at the well, yeah, he's maybe doing, at the he's time in the Star Trek series, but yeah, he is now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like Will, and also Will Wheaton when he was in Star Trek was much younger. Oh yeah, he's only about fifteen. Yeah, yeah, he's changed quite a bit physically since then. Mm-hmm. So he could probably, yeah, totally. But he could probably get away with being mm-hmm. re- being kind of blending into certain crowds. You know, something like Comic Con, he's going to stand out like a sore thumb because it's Will Wheaton. Yeah. But walking down the streets of London, mm-hmm. I mean, even somebody like Bill Nye, who is English and quite famous and quite recognisable, can walk down the streets of London and not be mobbed. And I yeah. know because I've walked past him before. Yeah, and you didn't mob him. I didn't do it on your own him. anyway. No. Yeah, it's yeah. also, yeah, one-man mobs are tricky at the best of times. Mm-hmm. And also, again, I have my rules. Yeah. Um, if I feel like it's the kind of thing they get all the time, I won't do it to them because yeah. I will give them a – if I sort of – my rule is if I make eye contact, I'll sort of smile as, as if to say, I know you. But it's, it's not the same as, I know you. Yeah. Like, I know you intimately because yeah. I see your carefully curated social media feed that presents mm-hmm. a side of you that you want your, your, you know, your, for lack of a better expression, your kind of corporate approved side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's not that kind of, I don't, the celebrities I follow on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, I don't, mm-hmm look at them as like this is them like what they're normally like this is yeah. this is their best their, this is their most twitter friendly self not yeah. even necessarily their best self because as i mentioned before some of these things turn people into tools when it has no right to I said i was sorry <laughs> <laughs> no present company excluded obviously oh. uh for whatever reason i don't know okay. but yeah I know. but i forget where we get where, how we got here but um, 
Benny Off and Vice. Yes, that's so it. They yeah. are no longer on Star Wars. They will not be doing their trilogy after. Or, well, they're not doing their films anymore. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if they ever confirmed it was a trilogy or not, to be honest. No, I'm not sure. No. Um, as far as I know, Ryan Johnson still got movies on the on the docket, but as, as far as he knows, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, nobody yeah. seems to <laughs> nobody seems to have any kind of clarity on this. I don't think Disney cares enough about Star Wars. No, I think they've or they have too much faith in its ability to self perpetuate. I think it's that. I think it's the second one. I think it's more they're taking it for granted that it will succeed because it's Star Wars. Yeah. Forgetting that that's not why Star Star Wars didn't succeed because yeah of that it succeeded because it, it had stuff going on and yeah. the stuff it had going on was kind of done with a certain amount of reverence. Exactly. There's a it's, line um, in the trailer, right? It's that, a, they, no, sure you go ahead first. Yes, yeah, so really quick. There's a line in the trailer that caught my ear. Um, facing down your fear is the destiny of every Jedi. No. <laughs> like Jedi by the time they're Jedi they're supposed to have figured that out it's not the de- the destiny is not no, that's what Luke, fear. who is it delivering that line is it Luke, Luke? that's what Luke was told but he's it, told you must confront Vader yeah, but that's to become not, a Jedi that's not necessarily him facing down fear so much as but it is his greatest fear isn't it I don't know well that and I don't know ironically moisture evaporators knitting <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because the robot De- hands. He's, he's, de- he's definitely afraid of T-16s. Yeah, that's weird. Had to cut it? that scene because all he did was scream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't, that, that kind of, let's say that line kind of rings like a, like you said, like a trailer line, mm-hmm. rather than one that kind of feels right when you hear yeah. it said. It might not be in the film. It know. might not be in the film. And, now, you know, obviously the, the whole his whole dialogue from the second Force Awakens trailer was not in the movie at all, so... Mm, yeah, that's the one that really annoyed me. Rankled, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's uh, Jabba's monster. Yes, indeed. Sorry, you were going to say before I jumped in there. Uh, it's... I feel as though... I, I really wish Disney would put the effort in styles where they put into like their second tier... Marvel. Uh, Marvel stuff. But, but, but they've got... They've made second tier Marvel characters like Black Panther, mm-hmm. like Doctor Strange, yep. like Ant Man into these household names because they've put this effort in, but they seem to just sit on their laurels when it comes to Star Wars. Yeah. If you've got friends who are Star Wars fans who didn't know Solo was coming out of the cinema, Disney mm-hmm. has issue has problems. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. And the other thing as well is, and I've just seen a tweet that kind of reinforces this. Mm-hmm. There, people are talking about the current month as, unironically, a golden age of Star Wars. And the reason they're saying that is because there are more things than normal. Like, it's a busy month, basically. So there's a book, there's resi- <laughs> So there's the, the, oh man, that's a little bit disingenuous. So they're saying is 19 releases this month. Four are Resistance episodes. Mm-hmm. Three are Mandalorian episodes. Jedi Fallen Order, fine. Mm-hmm. Vader Immortal in VR, that's probably pretty cool, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, and then comic books, which are always monthly releases. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of books. But this to say, the, the notion for me is um, more is be- more is good. Yeah. Like, not necessarily. Actually, more can be quite... The opposite, if it's mm. schlock. I'm not suggesting it's going to be. Like I say, I've got high hopes for Fallen Order. <sighs> yeah. I'm hoping it's going to be really good. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's this notion that more is more means, like, more means better. I'm getting a lot of stuff yeah. off my chest now, but I'm quite enjoying it after a couple That's of weeks fun. off. Um, mm. One of the things that's been really rankling me, and I've heard it, and again, I've seen it used a lot in the context of Star Wars recently, is mm-hmm. the notion of something being objectively good. That's not how art works. That's no, it's, it's it's just like narcissism. The only thing that is objectively good is the Rogue awesome. One Corridor scene. Oh yeah, well, yeah. All right, but I'll give you that. And Event Horizon, perhaps. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but Ghostbusters. I, yeah, I kid, obviously. But yeah. there are people who, unironically, say mm-hmm. like, "Oh, remind." I saw one. What was it? Something like reminder that. Um, the Last Jedi is objectively the best Star Wars movie. It's like, yeah, 
No, that's not no. happening. You can believe that. That's fine. And more power yeah. to you if you feel that way. But it doesn't. It doesn't it really. Also, it really alter, isn't. It doesn't alter. Like this is it. Like, it doesn't alter yeah. the reality of every other person. Yeah. Like, there's no such thing as like, this thing. There's no such thing really as your truth. There is your point yeah. of view and your experience, and those are valid. But yeah. it doesn't just like. It's. If, I find it also similarly like. Oh, I look at, like objectively amazing in this picture. Mm-hmm. I was like, get out, you know, get out from up your own. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. I say this is kind of weird therapy for me this evening, but no, it's cool. It's cool. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying it, and I'm yeah, sure listeners are as well. You're in for it. Um, I don't mean you're in for it as in you're next, pal. I mean you're you're here for it. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, but this notion of like, and this is where about seeing it in the context of Star Wars. So many people still have not got it through their heads that you can't use the box office takings of Last Jedi as a thing that it is good. Mm-hmm. You just can't. You can't. No, Absolutely not. That's not how it works. Because some, then, some of the greatest, almost what's considered the greatest movies ever made, crashed and burned. Exactly. Like Event Horizon. Yeah, that, that's how cult movies are made. Yeah, exactly. If, like I say, Event Horizon yeah. did not do well at the box office, but it got a massive cult following on DVD. Yeah, I can't believe that means the day after tomorrow is objectively better than the Shawshank Redemption. Well, quite, you know, and also not for nothing, but so many Transformers movies mm-hmm. are objectively better than so many other subjectively yeah. better movies, <laughs> yeah. which are, well, at least let's say more highly regarded by more people. Yeah. We can say that. It yeah, doesn't totally. make them objectively good. It just means they're more popular. That's also fine yeah. as a as a metric. Mm-hmm. But there's this notion, let's say, the the other thing as well is if you use that metric – Box office equals good film. You do, you throw Solo under the bus, yeah, and he won't like which, that. Which I don't think any of us should. No, because it's a fun movie. <laughs> it's a great movie. There's nothing wrong with it. I really like. I it. I love Solo. Yeah. yeah, I like it more than Last Jedi. Yeah, same. Yeah, and that's not to say again. I don't. I don't hate the Last Jedi. It's not. It's not the top mm-hmm. of my list. It's not the bottom of my list. But this notion of like, oh well, it's a. Oh yeah, you think Last Jedi is a bad movie? Like, oh, I'm sure there's like 1.6 billion reasons why it's not. It's like you don't understand how reality works. No, I mean this is just my point of view, right? Because otherwise, I'd be kind of undoing my own point. But mm-hmm. it just seems to me like people have kind of lost this sense of I'm not the only person in the universe. Mm-hmm. There's this kind of, like I say, this this arrogance to discourse online and i, I yeah. place and i say it again i place a lot of the blame at social media's feet because yeah. people can you know people get g'd up by i don't know like i say something like oh i got ten thousand retweets that means i'm a genius mm-hmm. like, no i saw somebody the other day and it was um it was pointed out to me by a guy called on the twitter called qui-gon tim which is a great name <laughs> Yes, it is. And um, he told somebody to uh, to do one because they described themselves as a thought leader. <sighs> That's not a term that you should be no. describing yourself with. That's something, if if anybody's going to be using it, it's somebody else calling you, like somebody else can call you one. Yeah. That's on them. But you shouldn't, that should never be used in the context of I am one. No. Get over yourself. Build a bridge and get over yourself. <laughs> but I see, I see it so much now. And it just makes mm-hmm. me not want to be on the internet because I just, yeah, I it's it. the, it's the, it's the place where you're just going to see it nonstop, yeah. just incessantly in your face all the time. And it's just exhausting. Mm-hmm. And that was why the holiday was good. Like just because, <laughs> no, it was a week of not having to deal with yeah. that crap. Like, you know, I'd got to, I jumped on, I think during that first week, the only time I jumped on was to um, mm-hmm. watch the trailer. Okay. I mean, I watched the trailer, jumped back off, Watched it a couple more times, thought about it a bit, mm-hmm. decided I had some, ha- you know, I decided I broadly liked it, but I had some hangups. Mm-hmm. And then when I went back on the net, I started reading Reddit. And then I was like, oh. And then I'd see things that other people got bothered mm-hmm. by. And I'm like, I hadn't spotted that. That's kind of, that's kind of dopey. Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. ruin the trailer for me. It won't, you know, that sort of thing, if it's in there, won't ruin the film for me. Mm-hmm. Some stuff, like I say, some stuff I've read about will, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Something's broken in my head. I think recently, just mm-hmm. there's some some levy has broken, some <laughs> some thread, some synapse has snapped, and I've just yeah. lost the plot. Like just and but not in that way of like I'm. It's not like I'm incoherent with rage. I'm just I'm just annoyed. Yeah, I get it. And I've got and like I say, it's, it's almost like there's not. I can't precise it, but 
I can at least articulate it, and that's okay. I, like I, can, it. De- yeah. I can deal with that as a rule of thumb. That's okay. But, yeah, in terms of trailers, of the three, I think if I had to rank them, it would probably be Mandalorian first, yeah. Fallen Order second, and Rise of Skywalker third. Mm-hmm. Rise of Skywalker of the three is my least favorite, but that's not to say again that I don't like it. I don't like it. Not, it's not that I don't like it entirely. It's just there yeah. are some bits that make me think, oh, there's going to be bits about this film I don't like. Yeah, and they're going to. And I'm just, you know, I'm just cautiously optimistic that they won't be the majority of the things. Yeah. There's not a lot else this week, I have to say. Mm. Um, it's one of those things. I mean, obviously, trailers upon trailers upon trailers. Mm-hmm. But, like I say, because, especially in the case of the episode 9 one, because it's been so long since the trailer dropped, I don't I don't feel like uh, we're going to be able to kind of spot some really hot take that nobody has picked no, up on. No, it's, uh, it's badly timed, as always, on here. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't help it. We weren't to know. Um, and by the time we did know... I mean, the mm-hmm. tickets. The you tickets on the other side been, of the planet. Well, yeah. the tickets have been booked for some time. <laughs> it's not mm-hmm. like I'm going to be able to rearrange that. Mm-hmm. No, you don't understand. This, you <laughs> know, this marriage is off to. They're going to be off to a great start because they're going to drop an episode nine trailer. It's like I'm leaving yeah. you already. Okay. Yeah, unprecedented <laughs> record uh, for jilting post wedding yeah. jilts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, is there much else in Star Wars going on? Uh, well, Clone stuff, Wars right? come out for Legion. Clone uh, Wars Legion, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see that. Uh, Greg Pak's taking or well, not taking over. He's doing the new Star Wars main series for Marvel, which I'm excited about because I, I really quite like him as a, a writer. Oh, yeah, Charles um, Soule's doing the Kylo Ren thing soon, right? Yeah, that, that's that interesting. That's about? kind of a story I've wanted for a while. So the Kylo Ren, so the issue one comes out about a week before Episode Nine, I think, or the day or the day before. Mm-hmm. Ever, they released the cover for issue two. Mm-hmm. I want to get your thoughts on this. Well, it's what looks like Luke and Ben Solo fighting the Knights of Ren. Yeah. Now, I'd always assumed, and I'm sure it's written somewhere, that the Knights of Ren were a bunch of Kylo's contemporaries. Uh, I've not seen that confirmed anywhere. That was like uh, an assumption a lot of us made. I yeah. think, in the same way a lot of us assumed Darth was his first name and not a title, but obviously another story source comes out and we, we kind of go, oh, okay, we'll go with that then. I think it's just um, mm. a reframing, I guess. I, I don't think it's a direct contradiction. I certainly don't think a contradiction like that would have got through. Yeah. Um, the story, If we can get the story group to put down their sippy cups and crayons for long enough, then I don't think it would have got past them. Mm-hmm. Here we go. So, according to fandom.com, so Wikipedia, mm-hmm. yep. they were formed sometime before the destruction of Luke's temple. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kylo, it seems, destroyed them all, destroyed all the students himself. Yeah, became. I'm sure there's a line in Force Awakens about taking some students with him. Yeah, he does. But then where did they go? Don't know. I would say I had assumed they'd become the Knights of Ren. Yeah. But the key word is assumed. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a bit weird, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um I can't quite what I find interesting is it's where how does Kylo get to the point where he's in charge? I think that might be what that story's about. I guess so. I suppose it would be. But mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, they, so I'm gonna. I've got an article up on Looper just to kind of get my head around what we have. Mm-hmm. You get Snoke offhandedly, the whole Master of the Knights of Ren line, as a mm-hmm. kind of almost like dismissively. Yeah. Um. So maybe he just fought his way to the top of it. Who yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. And then they're in. You know, they're in the, uh, what's it called? They're in the flashback or the flash. Mm -hmm. I mean, the flashback or forwards or whoever the hell. Who knows now? Mm -hmm. Um, Sideways. There's a theory that ties them to Acolytes of the Beyond from the Aftermath novels. Mm -hmm. But that's never been tied. That's a theory. Yep. Uh, They're not in episode eight at all. 
Yeah, so there's a line in episode eight. I thought it was in episode seven. I thought Han delivered it, but apparently Luke says, Ben vanished with a handful of my students and slaughtered the rest. Hmm. So what happened to the rest? The re- Well, not the rest that's in that sentence, the, the other ones. So I'd assumed they'd become... Uh, the Knights of Ren, yeah, as you say. Apparently maybe not. they did. Maybe they did. Maybe it was a complete insurrection. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, it could you, killed be, but... all of, maybe you killed all of the Knights of Ren mm. and took their place, which is why Snoke's kind of the tone behind Snoke's Master of the Knights of Ren could be: we know you're not really the Master of the Knights of Ren. You're not the real Knights of Ren. Yeah, yeah. It could be that there's only a couple when Kylo kind of comes across them, and then he fills mm-hmm. out their ranks with the students. Hmm. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It's tricky. Um, but I mean, I'm just happy they're in the film. Yeah. Same. I think it's the, the characters are pretty cool, look cool. Yeah. Yeah. We've been told from according to all the bits and pieces that do in the rounds, they're not going to be uh, depicted with their masks off. Okay. Cool. It's not going to be like one of those moments where the mask comes off and it's like, oh hey, it's Jimmy Morrison. Yeah. Oh yeah, hey, it's Matt Smith. <laughs> Um, all that's where driver. it was. Yeah, that's where yeah. it was. Um, but it's interesting. Like the the whole thing, the whole tease is very well done. The having mm-hmm. the cover drop. I mean, that must be a couple of months before it's going to actually drop. Because, like I say, the first issue, from what I understand, mm-hmm. of Kylo Ren is going to be the day before Episode Nine drops. Oh, really? Okay. So then that's going to be you're talking a month further down before Issue Two drops. Surely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I suppose so. I don't know. It's it's a bit weird, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's exciting. Well, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, sorry, you were saying Clone Wars Legion. <laughs> My brain always wants to put in the basketball quote after that and go, you're excited, just feel these nipples. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, mean, I haven't watched that movie in ages. I, oh, tried I love to, that film. I tried to the other day, but it's not on yeah. uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, I think it might be on the other one where it was from Maybe. last time I uh, watched it. Yeah. Well, Gazmo's on Amazon Prime. Oh. Other films are available. Yeah. I mean, loads, in fact. Um, yeah. But at, least, things. at least 11 Star Treks, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and probably, you know, those fantastic, highest grossing, thus objectively good Transformers movies. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's Clone Wars Legion, you were saying. Yeah, uh, we, we've unboxed that. It's coming up on Farwin really very soon. The model detail is absolutely superb. I'll try nice. and get a, a photo to you. Cool. Um, yeah, I'd like to see some of uh, the General Kenobi piece. We were all like gobsmacked how much it looks like Ewan McGregor. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. The facial sculpt is amazing. It, yeah, it just looks like a small Ewan McGregor. The facial sculpt is amazing. Uh, General Grievous looks super amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, but, and they've gone for quite a few uh, thematic little tweaks as well, like the, uh, the, the clone troopers can concentrate fire, mm-hmm. um, the droids can relay commands to each other across the battlefield, oh, nice. and, and are completely immune to suppression because they just keep firing and attacking. Yeah, so they're just um, like... Oh, that's really nicely. There's some thematics there I like. Yeah, uh, the, you get two droid echoes in a okay. core set, one, one squad of two, but you get four models, two standing and two rolling, depending on whether they're rolling mm-hmm. along or standing up with the shields deployed. Oh, so it's you like, like when you've out. got like a catapult made up, and a, like in the old strategy yeah. games, you used to have a catapult that you had to pack up and move. Yeah. It's like having two models yep. for the different states. Yeah, but it's rather than having like a droid echo, and if he's balling along, they've put a little counter next to him, you just completely swap the model out. Oh, that's awesome. It, it looked brilliant. Yeah, yeah. The Armada campaign as well came out. Uh, we're all very excited for that. We're looking for two more players. Uh, so even Kyle Mullings, who's uh, never played Armada before, wants to do his campaign. What's the? Do you know what the, pl- the premise is behind it? Uh, it's called Rebellion in the Rim. It's just about a, a galactic conflict on the edges of okay. space. Uh, but it's up to six players. And uh, obviously Armada is a skirmish um, tactical scale. Mm-hmm. Or operational scale uh, naval war game. So you're dealing, you're pushing rather than pushing around X-wings, which you would X-wing, you're pushing around squadrons or capital ships like Type A, a Super Star Destroyer. Yeah. Um, but this, they are smaller engagements. You can run in up to two teams of up to three people to a team. Okay. But it's also RPG light in that you design your fleet captain as a character and you level them up and give them extra skills and stuff as the campaign goes along. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's, it's exploded. Armada, it's made it. Um, and it explodes. Yeah, and it explodes. Wow. No, it, 
and uh, uh, we've we've got some finally uh, some characters who have yet to appear in Armada finally put an appearance in, mm. including uh, Ezra and Kanan, and our playable in Armada, hmm. uh, as is Lando in the Falcon finally, because you okay. could have Han and Chewie as optional parts before finally you can mm. have Lando. And uh, the one that excited me most was uh, IG-88B. Okay. Which implies that the multiple IG-88s might be canon again. Oh, maybe, yeah. Could well be. I mean, obviously, there's an IG unit in the Mandalorian. Yeah, my understanding is that is not IG from like interviews and uh, I've gleaned. It's not IG eighty eight. It's IG something something, yeah. and it's almost like a recurring joke of the Mandalorian is people mistake him for IG eighty eight. Okay. Uh, as long as it's not overdone. As long as it's kind of done in, in a yeah. The greatest recurring joke frequency is for Father Ted, that money was just resting in my account. If they do it at that kind of frequency, mm-hmm. it would be great. Yeah, like maybe three or four at a push over the entire series. It, yeah, that would yeah. be great, yeah. If it's every single – if it's like multiple times an episode, it's like – Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Mistaken oh, robot man. identity. I mean, if they start doing that, just go, man, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I might still watch it to be honest, but mm-hmm. yeah. But obviously, we have to wait because we can apparently get stuff. Orders, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just you know, I'm not a pirate guy. Really? Which, no, I know. It's weird, um, you look that one. It's I know. Scurvy. Um, so I think that about wraps it up. I think for. Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I say, heavy on the trailers. Yeah, heavier than it's been on the news, but that's not saying much. Yeah. Um, so don't be so, you know, just general advice to our listeners out there. Don't be so keen to revel in the misfortunes of others. Just yeah. we, we raised you better than that. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for listening. Having said that, to Talk Star Wars this week. Uh, if you've enjoyed the show and uh, you wish to subscribe. I yeah, me too. I do. Um, then you can find us on all the good podcasting apps and some of the less good ones. Uh, you know, to name but a few, mm-hmm. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're available on Emotionally 14's YouTube channel, Emotionally 14's Spreaker page, CastBox, Podcast Addict, I think, is on there now as well. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. There's so many, like, and we're just, we're on them all. And if we're mm-hmm. not, then let us know because um, we can fix that if we mm-hmm. know. Um, that's generally something we can do if we know and we can't if we don't so yep make that the case uh as best you can so yeah talk star wars is an emotionally 14 production uh emotionally 14.com is the website where all that magic stuff happens uh podcasts uh video content Mm -hmm. written pieces there's so much stuff fantasy sci-fi horror superhero i think that's all geek genres isn't it i think that's yeah and um spicy um oh yeah yeah okay yeah uh Spicy spice, we underrated yeah. spice. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, podcasts, both in-house produced and also we share a bunch, of, yeah, a bunch of the stuff we really like. Mm-hmm. You can find those on the website on various days of the week. There's always something going on. This is the thing, you know. It's a mm-hmm. busy, it's a busy place for. I do my best. As in, lovely you know, stuff. I, I work flat out on it all the time. Mm, yeah, indeed. So yeah. you can find all that stuff on the web at emotionally14.com. Twitter, yep. Facebook, Instagram, Emotionally 14. Search for it on the web and you will find – search and you shall receive. Yeah. Uh, and I say there's plenty of stuff on there to keep you entertained. Uh, Talk Star Wars drops on a Monday unless you are part of our Patreon program. Ooh, tell somewhere. us about the Patreon, Rob. So uh, it's on – I'm Patreon. trying to do an infomercial type vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. I like it. I'm, I'm feeling it. Mm-hmm. Um, so on patreon.com slash Talk Star Wars, for just $1 a month, you can enjoy ad-free versions of the podcast, which drop two days early. So $1 month, a month. That's insane. It is insane. And no way to run a business, as we no. found, <laughs> you know, as I found to my cost. But, um, yeah. No $1 more $1 waiting for a whole extra two days for my podcast. Exactly. It's a dollar a month. I get Talk Star Wars every Saturday morning. Exactly. Saturday morning cool. UK time or Friday night, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Saturday night in some other parts. But that's not all. Know. All of our credit card, and you also receive this CD of Billy Ray Cyrus sings the Eagles <laughs> for re- because reasons <laughs> um, contractual mainly. <laughs> One dollar a month 
25 cents a week. That is a quarter. Yes, it is. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Um, and in return, as I say, ad-free versions of the show, so you don't get the beginning and end ads. You don't have to you, – you have to – it does mean – you have to find out for yourself if A Quiet Place is available on DVD and digital or whether um, Santander's mortgages offers are for you. But, Mm -hmm. you know, ultimately, you take the chance, you roll the dice, you take the risks, and there you have the Talk Star Wars patron. Patreon.com slash Talk Star Wars, where you can sign up for as little as a dollar a month. And in return, you get a little you get a little love on the show when uh, you know when you join because last time we did that, mm-hmm. and uh, you get the ad free early releases. And if we do sideshows, not sideshows, mm-hmm. the extra shows like uh, roundtables and things like that, they yeah. go on the feed at least a week before. But that's not all. It also comes with an extendable head for those hard to reach corners. Who makes the corners hard to reach? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still in infomercial mode. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash Talk Star Wars. That's the place. Hey. So uh, otherwise you can enjoy it on a Monday, available on all the places I mentioned, yeah. animotionally14.com and talkstarwars.co.uk, which is still going because it's paid up for a couple of years, so why not? Uh, <laughs> that is literally <laughs> the reason. Um, Brad, if people want to find you yes. in between shows, they, uh, maybe they, they listen and they're like, this guy's jib. Is a, yeah, is a well-cut cool. jib. Uh, I do two other shows on Emotion. Well, I don't. I, I, I guest on this show. I produce two shows for mm-hmm. Emotion Fourteen, which is uh, Fire When Ready, which are our, our Star Wars tabletop gaming show, and uh, Bring On the Bad Guys, which is our superhero themed tabletop gaming show. And you can get those on Emotionally Fourteen dot com, and of course on Emotionally Fourteen's YouTube channel. Uh, and you can follow uh, social media for Fire When Ready is at Fire When Ready UK on both Facebook and Instagram. Uh, for Bring On The Bad Guys, it's at Bring On The Bad Guys on Instagram. And for some reason on Facebook, it's at Bring Bad Guys, which sounds like a command. <laughs> uh, if you want to add me, you can have me on Facebook.com slash Brad Harmer Barnes. And you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Real Brad HB. But if you really, really like me, then the kindest thing you can do is to buy one of my books, which you can buy from Audible and Amazon. Yes, you can. And uh, Bring Bad Guys, because yes. we've run out. Yeah. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter and you know maybe maybe after listening to my little diatribe you don't but maybe you do and maybe you're I, like oh this I, this guy's jib too is similarly honest, well cut I, I think you should use Twitter more because okay. when you were on holiday all that was hitting out was your automated tweet saying hi I write for E14 hi I wrote this book here is my Star Wars podcast mm-hmm. and it's lovely. It, it, was, it was hard to tell that you were away. Hmm. Interesting. It's all you post. Mm. <laughs> but like, sometimes you rage at tech companies. I enjoy that. Uh, see, the trouble is they've actually fulfilled their obligations now. Balls. I know. I'm hoping – I'm not hoping this. I was about to say I'm hoping they're a piece of crap, but I really don't hope because after all the trouble I went to to get them, I hope they're fantastic and the best piece of kit I ever bought. Yeah. So far, so good. But, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, for people who are following that on Twitter, that ordeal is now over with. Yeah, um, I got my stuff, and I, yeah, I have a fresh new problem now, which I'll share with you off the, off the air. But uh, okay, cool. yeah, it's, Ooh, it's, 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 no, no, this is like a trivial one, but in comparison, oh, okay. it's, yeah, it's quite yeah. funny. I, I find it funny, but then I would mm-hmm. because it doesn't affect me so badly. Yeah, um, but yeah, if you if you like, say if you if you're sitting there and you're just like, oh, do you know what this guy? I I realise his rants are vaguely incoherent, but he's been off for a couple of weeks, so he's probably a bit rusty. But I yeah. think I think given the chance on Twitter, he probably turns out all right. Yeah. Uh, at Robway Vision is where you can do that. Uh, and that's also uh, my name on Instagram. I will probably start putting some honeymoon photos up, I think, in the next couple oh, of weeks. Oh, yeah, the time. do that. We yeah, I've, got, that. I've got hundreds of the bloody things, but I just, yep. at the time, I'm so focused on taking the picture that I don't think about sharing it. And then after yep. the fact, I have to sort of book time in it. It's weird. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably put some honeymoon photos and stuff up uh, around the web mm-hmm. in the next couple of weeks. So, at Rob Wade Vision on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Facebook is Emotionally 14 Talk Star Wars. If you want to sort of follow stuff, that's the best way to do it. At, mm-hmm. uh, at Emotionally 14, at Talk Star Wars. Twitter and Instagram, they're both there mm-hmm. to varying degrees of use. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Apart from that, I know the Commonwealth, I'm doing. I'm getting to that. Yes, I was, yeah, yeah, here we go. So I have to issue an apology, but it's kind of like a, a, a temporary one. Uh, Matt Salvatore, you did... And uh, send us a listener question, and I did get it, uh, but I didn't have a chance to set my kit up, so 
next week. Okay. That so I look fair. forward to his – the file is just called Kenobi. So I have a rough idea of what it's about, but I don't know the content. Yeah. I haven't actually listened okay. to it through because I like to be surprised. Ooh. Is um, it him just going, cut out If he can do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I just love that scream so much. Yep. Um, I honestly wish I could do it. And actually the one in Battlefront's better than the one in Rebels. Even though I the one in Rebels so is too. awesome. That ab- it's like he's got Floyd Rose in his neck. It's amazing. It's pretty incredible. So, Matt, yeah. I did receive it. It has come through. Fear not. It will be in next week's show. I didn't have a chance to set my kit up in time. It is mm-hmm. my first show back since... I, uh, since holiday, so you know, I need to get back into the swing. Mm-hmm. But next week, Matt Salvatore's question will be part of the mix. Mm-hmm. And then I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network, of which we are a proud and willing participant. Mm-hmm. And as I said, willing participants, if we're being held against our will in a podcast <laughs> network, like, who does that? <laughs> Um, named, named after us. What kind know, of weird, it's weird Stockholm syndrome is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in addition to Talk Star Wars, the Commonwealth is comprised of Tumbling Sabre, mm-hmm. Generation X Wing, The Nerd Room, Rogue Squadron, Retro Inc., The Same mm-hmm. for the Cast, and The San Diego Sabres. Now, I have some good news on The San Diego Sabres front. Oh. Uh, there will be, there is a process happening right now in the way of taking the show forwards Good. so I mean obviously you know we were all kind of stopped in our tracks by the sad untimely passing of Steve Kirk mm-hmm. hopefully people enjoyed I know I certainly you know found it quite uh, moving to have the round table dedicated to him on the mm-hmm. 21st of October mm-hmm. that went on the main feed um, the Force Awakens round table was cool but the Steve Kirk uh, uh, tribute episode I think was really lovely and really well received Rob Cast did an absolutely cracking job of putting that together mm-hmm. um, so yeah it seems like there's some movement on that front so we may yeah. start seeing you know something something from the San Diego Sabres guys in the not too distant future so let's let's hope because you mm-hmm. know I think that's what Steve would like, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I agree. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, we can we can share more about, you know, some more positive on that note in the, mm-hmm. in the not-too-distant future. Yeah, be good. And I'm sure people will be pleased to hear that as a possibility. Mm-hmm. And I hope I haven't jumped the gun. And if I have, forgive me. Um, because no. I, I can't I can't edit. <laughs> I, can't, I can't know in the mind. As long as long time listeners of a show will know. <laughs> hey, hey. If I knew whether or not it was okay to put it in the show, I'd have figured that out by now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't say something and then go, I wonder if it's okay. Search brain, yes. Because then I just <laughs> would know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, the Star Wars Commonwealth is available on the web at StarWarsCommonwealth.com mm-hmm. and you can take from there your first steps into a larger world. Boom. Thank you very much for listening to Talk Star Wars this week. We will see you again next week for episode 189. In the meantime, be good to yourselves, be good to each other. I mean that one above all, given the subject matter we talked about this evening. Uh, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and as always, may the Force be with you. Man. <laughs> <laughs>